Two wins in a month had given Sainz a confidence that even a tough Argentine rally couldn't dent. And by the time the full World Championship circus gathered for the magnificent Thousand Lakes, it was in no mood to settle for anything less than victory. Now that he'd broken his duck, it seemed nothing was going to stop him. The fact that no one other than a Scandinavian driver had ever won the fastest event on the calendar didn't bother Sainz, nor did a foot injured in a practice crash any days beforehand. He blitzed the stages, leaving the spectators open-mouthed and the opposition in tatters to make history. A Spaniard had won the Thousand Lakes. And six weeks later in San Remo, a Spaniard had won the World Rally Championship too. Second in Australia and third on San Remo, despite a big role, had left him out of touch of the others and in the history books. It was really a fairy tale ending to a year that had started with such frustration. The ever-growing Science fan club cheered him on and he responded in traditional fashion with a flamboyant victory display. We have been trying really hard this year and at the end today we are now sure that we have the, the championship but not until today, we have, we have been not sure until the last stage. When you started the position in third place this morning, did you think I'll stay there just to clinch the world championship or did you think I'll try for Juha, try and get higher up? No, I was trying to keep the third position and looking at Cerrato what he was doing. Last year you had a lot of misfortune, a lot of bad luck with the car. The car seems to have proved itself now and you've got the World Championship, so everything seems to have come together this year. Yeah, I think all the team has been working and the car is much more reliable and even he can, the car can... Uh, how do you say the car can uh, roll and continue? <laughs> Sorry, and continue, so it's... The car is very strong. When you started rallying, did you ever think that you'd be world champion? Okay, it's a dream for, for every, every rally driver which really has some interest. In, and I was really, really following the rallies and my heroes and I was maybe just in the very, very inside thinking that maybe one day I could be a world champion, a world champion but that was really, really difficult to, to say. For sure you think on that and you dream more than think on that. And they say that you have very strong motivation that you give over 100% all the time when you're driving. Do you think that's maybe why you became champion? Okay, I think it's uh, important whatever you are doing, do it with full motivation and full power. I try to do in, in uh, when I'm rallying or when I'm driving, I try to, to do with full power, full motivation and I try to, to do my best. The problem I will say when, when you are driving it is that uh, sometimes you can, you can be the fastest, you can practice more than anybody, you can be prepared for, for a rally like nobody else. But uh, as a different with other sports, here we have a machine with us, and here we have uh, something that is not uh, in your hands that can be can can make a problem. And for example, uh, it's very hard when when you you have been preparing a, or when you have been driving good in a rally, and for a mechanical problem you you cannot finish or, or you lose the rally. I, I say that because. In a tennis player, for example, when you have been practi practicing hard and you have uh, good motivation, it's only you who can lose or win. But in our sport, the difference is that a mechanical problem can put you out. And that is very hard for, for you to, to, to understand that maybe you, you cannot do more and still you are not winning.